everyone and welcome back to my studio well guys this video today is going to be a special one and first of all because today I'm collaborating with my beautiful friend Hexion and if you don't know yet who Hexion is he is an extremely talented doll artist and he is really one of the brightest stars here in our doll artist community on YouTube and actually you know Hexion, Delightful and also Andrea from the Nicole Dreams channel these three people have inspired me to start my own YouTube channel almost four years ago it was so I can even tell that they were my virtual teachers in this new hobby then back in the days and that's why yeah it feels kind of that I'm collaborating with my master today <laughs> so and another special thing about this makeover is actually the topic of the makeover so you could see it already from the thumbnail that today we are going to make an evil Ariel doll and Hexion is going to make a sweet and kind Ursula doll on his channel and you know I really love this concept of making twisted Disney characters already for a very long time really before even I've become a doll artist I really always love these projects you well, you could find lots of them like when artists uh, doll artists cosplayers makeup artists they make evil Disney princesses and for example some kind and sweet villains of course this is not my invention this genre exists already for years and I really loved it since I've seen it for the very first time and today it's finally time to let my inspiration go to let my creative juices to flow and today it's time to work in this little bit twisted Disney direction so today we're making an evil Ariel and Hexion is going to make an kind Ursula doll and by the way we've decided to surprise each other with the end result so I haven't seen his final pictures he hasn't seen my final pictures of course we were collaborating like chatting through this whole process we shared certain details but none of us has seen the final result yet everything I've got is this silhouette picture that you can see right now on your screens and that's why I really cannot wait to see what Hexion has made there. So please let's go watch it together. But first let's watch my video, okay? So <laughs> let's first watch my Evil Ariel and then let's go all together to the Hexion's channel. I'm going to leave the link to his channel in the description box under this video. And then let's watch together his evil evil no his kind Ursula makeover and by the way I think Hexion is somewhere about to cross 1 million followers I'm not sure but it's supposed to be something like this I guess so let's go there and help him to get the golden YouTube button and if you are actually coming from the Hex channel hello my name is Marina I'm a doll artist and I repaint new dolls here on my channel every week Friday already for years so join the family I would be very happy if you subscribe to my channel hit the bell button then you know all this jazz so let's be friends Okay, and now let's talk about the evil Ariel. What has happened to this girl? Why has she suddenly become evil? What has been twisted there in this story? And you know, it wasn't actually that much difficult for me because my Ariel, like the first Ariel I've met in my life, wasn't the one from Disney. You know, I'm born in the USSR and we didn't really hear about Disney, about Ariel, about anything else, but of course we had a little mermaid and it was a story written by Scandinavian Danish writer Hans Christian Andersen and that story was dark guys I can tell you in his original story the little mermaid met a prince she fell in love with him and she has actually traded her tail mermaid tail actually like her mermaid nature into a pair of legs to be able to walk on earth, to become a human, to be able to meet her prince in real life and to be together with him. 
but then the prince has rejected her and she become very depressed I don't know, of course, it's a very, in a nutshell, <laughs> my version of events. So she became very sad, she came to the sea, she couldn't become a mermaid anymore, that's it, it was irreversible. She was a human, she got rejected, she was sitting there sad, and she got turned into a sea foam, so died, basically. So it was an extremely sad story, that's why for me it wasn't really that difficult to imagine how Ariel could turn really mad because I've decided to go from this original story. So my Ariel fell in love, my Ariel traded her tail, exchanged her tail for a pair of legs, she got rejected, but instead of becoming sad and depressed and turning into a sea foam, she actually got extremely mad she activated some, I don't know, hidden mermaid powers in her body and brain. She has made some tail, really like far-fetched tail out of some mud and seashells and maybe out of some dead fish and stuff like this. She really basically created her own tail and she has become an evil sea queen. You know, it might happen to women, to girls, when they are rejected and when they are not happy in love. So, it's been a very long intro, but of course it's going to be a really big project this week. The last thing I'm going to show and say is probably I'm going to demonstrate you the doll, the, the model for this transformation and I've decided to work with this Laguna Blue doll. Well, first of all, this doll already has kind of little bit sea nature, she's already partially sea creature, so kind of fits. And also her face is extremely sweet, really, this is probably the sweetest Monster High face mold in the complete collection. So I thought it would be a really interesting challenge to try to make this extremely cute, extremely sweet, extremely nice looking doll into an evil looking Laguna Blue slash Ariel doll. So now I'm going to undress this doll, I'm going to cut her hair very short, yeah, and then we will proceed with the rest of the thing. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button, and I'm going to start working. When the long hair is gone, I can warm the head up with a hair dryer to be able to disconnect the head from the body. And after this, I will remove the rest of the short hair from the inside of the head using my tweezers. Now we can take pure acetone and remove her face. I'm going to give her red hair, of course, because I'm planning to follow the original color scheme. So I've prepared already this fire red saran hair, but first of all I need to paint her head with a couple of layers of red acrylics. And then I take my rerouting tool and I refill all these holes in her head with this new hair. And 
this is her new hair about four hours later. Now I can attack a glue inside of the head to keep all this new hair on its place and I will let the glue dry for 24 hours. And while the glue is drying, I have time actually to work on her body. Like I told you already in the beginning, we will try to turn her legs into a tail that would look like, I don't know, like she would have done it herself, trying to go back to the sea world. And to create such an effect, I'm going to connect her legs together using epoxy sculpt. But first of all, I'm going to increase the flexibility of the joints, and for this I'm going to remove all this plastic here on the back of the knees using my Dremel tool. Voila, you can see the difference clearly now, right? So I'm going to do the same to the second leg of camera and then we move to the epoxy sculpt part of the transformation. And I've also decided to remove her underwear because I don't really think our Ariel needs panties. So after this we can finally take the epoxy sculpt and I'm going to connect the legs together. It's good I bought really 2 kilos of epoxy sculpt just before the lockdown. Now it would be probably much more difficult to buy it here in Europe because this is an American product. And I've also bought 25 cans of Mr. Super Clear sealant. You know, while other normal people are buying, I don't know, spaghettis and toilet paper and olive oil to prep a little bit. I'm storaging Mr. Super Clear sealant, epoxy sculpt, what else? Warble, I also bought a lot of it, a lot of it. So I'm a real doll artist prepper here. I've let it dry for 24 hours and this is what we've got guys, it looks and moves really good and you can clearly see the improvement in the flexibility of the body of her knees. Right now she can sit on her knees and like this she will pose much better on the final pictures. Now I still want to add some extra shapes to the sides here, then it will look more like a tail, but I'm still going to keep the legs visible here in the middle. So now let's sand the body slightly with nail buffers and then I will cover both the body and the head with white acrylics and then I will apply a couple of layers of light nude paint on top of it. Thank you. 
And while I was already busy with spraying the paint, I suddenly realized that the crack on her, let's call it back, doesn't really fit her mermaid's nature. So I will go back to the epoxy sculpt, refilling this crack on the back, and then we will continue painting the doll. The top of the body and also the visible parts of the legs I will make light nude, the same like the face. And then the sculpted parts of the tail are going to be dark green. But before I paint the green parts of the tail, I still want to make some scales on the sculpted areas. For this I'm going to use a couple of pieces of tissue paper, or it also can be toilet paper if you bought a lot of it prepping for the lockdown. And then I take tweezers with round ends and I tear the tissue into smaller pieces and I glue these paper scales to the doll's body with tacky glue. Okay, I will let the tail dry for now. There is still a lot of work to do, but I'm going to start with drawing the evil face. I've bought, by the way, a set of pastels from Pan Pastel lately online. So we're going to test them today because they're supposed to be amazing. I don't know, I'm really curious about them. But now let's spray the face with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. And then I will start sketching the face using watercolor pencils. We're going to give her very arched and evil looking eyebrows today, kind of let's borrow them from Ursula. So now let's try the new pastels. Normally you're supposed to apply them with different sponges, but I think I will use a brush, like always, to get a more blended coverage. Oh yeah, guys, and the pigmentation is fantastic, just fantastic. I needed really just the tiniest amount of a product. And it's enough to get a really nice blended shadow. Amazing, I'm impressed. Yeah, the darker pastels look really amazing, so now let's try the lighter ones on the next layer. And the light pastels work really amazing, fantastic. I don't know, I would say the coverage is a couple of times better than from my regular pastels. Amazing, and I'm working normally with professional, expensive Faber-Castell and Rembrandt pastels. And these ones are really 10 times better, I'm amazed. Wow, guys, I'm really amazed with the quality of the pastels. They're so pigmented and so easy to blend. I'm going to order more shades immediately while the sealant is drying. Oh, 
Okay, now let's draw the rest of the face using my watercolor pencils and her eyes I'm going to make completely blue without irises, like this she will look more evil and her eyes will be kind of glowing with this blue light. So I think I'm happy with her face for now and it's time to move back to the body again. Everything seems to be perfectly dry and it still functions really good, so we can start working on her tail, I mean like the big fins on the end of the body and this tail of the tail, the end of the tail, it's going to be removable, like some sort of shoes and I'm going to make it out of my beloved warbler thermoplastic so i'm warming it up and i start sculpting first the base part of it and then i will also add the fins The fins I'm going to make out of foam paper, like this I will be able to make them flexible and I start with sketching them and with cutting them out. I warm up the sides of this foam paper with an iron and then I stretch and deform them slightly to make the fins more interesting and more realistic looking. And I'm going to add some texture as well using a glue gun. I glue the fins to the tail and then I still want to add some textured paper scales to the sculpted part of the tail. And then I can finally paint all this construction with dark green acrylics. So after this I'm going to add shadows to the tail using soft pastels and after this I can also blush the top part of the body to make it the same color like the face.
I want to pay some extra attention to her feet because according to the original story she experienced severe pain every time she stepped on the ground like if she walked over some sharp blades it was a part of the spell and I want to draw the wounds on her feet because this is kind of an important part of the story Okay, now let's dry brush the tail a little bit using golden acrylics to show the texture of our rotten scales a little bit better. And after this I think we will be kind of done with the body. Now I still want to make a top for my Ariel and right now I'm busy with making the basic part of the top out of Warbler Thermoplastic. And already now I'm making a tiny hole in the middle of the top and then I cover it with black acrylics. I want to decorate the top with these pretty skulls and this is actually an earring so I stick the pin into the hole we made earlier and I fix it with hot glue okay we can put the top to the doll's body and now I want to decorate the tail with golden chains Well, I think we're done with the body and now I want to go back to the head and first of all I'm going to style her hair a little bit. And now we can finally attach the false lashes and to add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips. And the last thing that we are going to make today is going to be like a rock throne, you know, like a big piece of rock formed as a throne where our evil Ariel is going to sit and for this I'm making first a raw shape of it out of kitchen foil and then I'm going to cover it with warbler
When I'm happy with the shape, I paint it with black acrylics and then I dry brush the surface with golden acrylics a little bit. Well, now I think we are finished and it means it's time to take a look at the end result pictures. So, and this is my evil Ariel, guys. I can tell you honestly, it was quite a big project and I wasn't that sure from the beginning if everything would go, you know, smooth and like planned. But in the end, I think everything looks really good and my sweet and cute Laguna Blue doll looks like a real evil sea queen. And at the same time, I can clearly see the resemblance with Ariel, the character stays recognizable, and this is really important in this kind of a makeover. So, I think I should continue working in this direction. I've made already almost all Disney Princess dolls, and now it's time for Twisted Disney, I think. So, if you have any good ideas for the Twisted Disney dolls, your propositions are, like always, more than welcome in the comment section under this video. This doll will be available for sale, but not immediately, after the borders go open again. Then I will post my complete quarantine collection of dolls for sale. And right now, guys, it's time to see what Hexion has made to his Ursula doll. I can't wait to see, so let's go to his channel and watch it together now. So guys, and that was my doll transformation of the week. I really hope, like always, that you've enjoyed it today. And if so, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button, and I'm going to see you again next week, Friday, with something very special. You're gonna like it, I promise you. So, see you soon. Love you guys. Bye!